This video is to show you how to create and organize a geo database, sometimes called just a database. What we're going to do is we're going to turn this mess right here into a more organized fashion. Um, and by working in a geo database, we are offered a few more luxuries than working just from folders. Um, a big one is being able to assign a coordinate system to a large group of shapefiles. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to right click, go to new and personal geo database. Um, you can use the file geo database if you want. They're larger and more groups of people can edit them. However, um, only I think certain versions of the software, Arc Editor and above can, can use it. I'm not sure if Arc View can. So I'm just going to stick with a uh, personal geo database just because it's what I'm used to. And what you're going to want to do is whenever working with the geo database, you're going to want to name it after the location that you're working in, uh, whether that's a city, um, a park, a, a corporation, anything. So what we're going to, I'm just going to name it Town USA, uh, just be, be very generic. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make subcategories in that geo database. Um, and this is where it'll allow me more freedom than just folders. So we're just going to go to new and data and feature data set. Uh, I'm just going to label this well field. Make sure there's an underscore if you're doing two words. Um, or you could have just left it all one word. And this is where it allows us to assign a coordinate system. I'm going to sign it NAD. 1983 US feet and it will assign this coordinate field to whatever I import into this data set. Um, the vertical coordinate system only matters if you plan on doing 3D modeling which I don't plan on using. And just leave the tolerances alone unless you have plans for it yourself. Now what we're going to do is we have our well field data set so what we're going to do is import files. So we're just going to go down to import, feature class multiple, and we're going to add those ones that are important to us. So with water fields, what would be important is streams, the watershed, the well field, the well field trails, and the wells themselves. We're just going to add those and then we're going to click OK. Now this will allow us to assort things rather than just have one folder with an odd assortment of files. Because sometimes we only need to worry about a certain segment of our, our field of interest. Now you cannot put tables inside a data set. The reasoning being is that um, they won't appear on the map so there's no real reason to have a coordinate system attached to them. But we can import them into the geo database itself and I'll show you how to do that later on. So now if we open up our geo database we can see that our well field now has all the files associated with the well field. Um, if we wanted to, we could create a, a new one, feature data set of transportation. You would go in and assign a coordinate system, the same one that you use for your other one. And you would right click, import, multiple feature class, and you'd be able to bring in gas stations, roads, um, trails if you wanted to, if they were driving road trails, you'd probably want to include those. So by doing this, we can offer more classification inside our, our main interest. And if we wanted to, we could do 
town proper. Once again, you would add the same coordinate system. I like to use state planes because it has the least uh, air when it comes to distance, area, all together. Um, there are certain other ones you could use if you need distance to be right on the nose or area right on the nose. Um, but town or state planes normally are the best ones to use for, for small areas. And for town proper, we'd probably want to include buildings, curbs, gas station, land use, property lines, sewer access, stuff like that. We could do another one for utilities and put in the utilities, sewer access, roads maybe. Um, so you can have the same shape file in different ones. It's just based on how we can break them up. And like I said, each one of these now has a coordinate system attached to it. That is right here. You can actually go in and, and modify it if you need. Let me cancel out of there. And say uh, we had a few shape files we didn't really have anywhere to put them and we don't want to put them in a, a data set, all you would do is right click, import, feature class, multiple. put these three in now shape files can be uh, acquired from anywhere from yourself you can digitize them yourself you can collect them using a GPS you can go out and get them off the internet you can get them from an employer a, a third party as you can see now uh, if we hit on our Town USA uh, database, we have our three data sets and our three shape files. Now, seeing that we can't put tables inside these data sets, what we will do is we will just put them in the, the geo database and we just go by import table multiple and we just add them in here. You should never try to add a shape file through this one. Uh, it won't let you. Now if we click on, now we have our, all our tables, um, some shape files broken into subcategories that make for better organization, um, easier way to, to, to exchange with other people, rather than go in and just save a file that has a bunch of multiple, uh, a shape file is a multiple set of sh files put together and that makes a shape file. By putting it in a geo database, it kind of ties them all together so there's no way you'll leave like half or a quarter of the the actual shape file in the original file when trying to transport it to someone else. So it's just a good way to stay organized. And uh, if we wanted to add, put a roster, I don't have any, but uh, we can, you would just put it right here. You'd come down, import, roster data set, and it works just like these right here. Uh, and then once again, you can't put those inside a data set. Uh, as you can see, it will not let you. But you can export to other geo databases as well. And you can import from other geo databases. So this is the importance of a geo database is to keep things organized. And the data sets allow us to do it with even a better system because now we can have subcategories within a geo database.